So yes, I, uh, I want to thank Dr. Del Rossi, Mr. Lacavera, and the Board of Education for this opportunity to update you on our educational technology planning for the upcoming school year. Um, Mr. Lacavera asked me to prepare a uh, three to five minute update, so uh, naturally I'll try to keep this under 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> the best way I can describe um, the innumerable decisions made and initiatives taken over the last two months in planning for the 2021 school year is to call it a balancing act. With each decision we face as a department and as a district, we're constantly balancing the risk reward of immediate need with long-term best practice. We have seen over a very short period of time, a well-constructed developmentally and academically appropriate five-year plan get thrown out the window in favor of a triage service of expediently acquiring online services, resources, materials, and interventions, along with additional hardware and supporting licenses to ensure equitable access in a remote environment for all students. I have to be honest with the board. It's with a very heavy heart that this situation has forced us to move in a direction that's contrary to what we believe is best for children in a typical learning environment. You all have worked with Dr. Del Rossi long enough to have picked up on his frequently said aphorisms, like, like this one. The rubber meets the road when the classroom door closes and the interactions between teacher and student takes over. I firmly believe that technology does not teach. Teachers teach. Technology is a tool to help teachers lift the learning of their students. However, we're now in an environment where the classroom door that is closing is virtual. And the interaction between teacher and student is dependent upon both of their abilities to connect through the window of a computer screen. Because of this, we've been forced to make decisions and acquisitions that we have vigilantly measured up against the balance of short-term necessity with long-term educational appropriateness. Because yes, there will be a day, and we hope that day comes sooner than later, that we return to some normalcy. And in my area, I wanna make sure that the decisions we make now are an investment as much in that hopeful day as it is in filling this immediate and necessary need. So let me share with you an overview of the new materials, resources, and tools that teachers and students will see for the fall 2020. Many of these acquisitions were made after careful and thorough review of 175 staff responses and 1,740 parent responses regarding the closure between March and June. Again, a balance, a balance of teacher feedback, community feedback, and best educational practice. We'll start with Google Suite. 96% of classroom teachers indicated that they agreed or strongly agreed that the Google Suite, which includes the core services of docs, slides, sheets, forms, and classrooms supported their instruction, with 95% of those responding say it supported student learning. Additionally, 81% of respondents said they agreed or strongly agreed that Google Meet as a video conferencing tool supported their teaching. As we expected to be a trend, however, Many of the freely offered services and upgrades provided to schools around the country in those last few months of the school year now come with a price tag. G Suite Basic continues to be free, but Google is planning on rolling out many new features, including some high demand features that will only be part of their enterprise version, including one specific feature that teachers came to rely on quite heavily, the ability to record a lesson in Google Meet and push the recording through their Google Classroom. This coupled with new features like hand raising, a Q&A feature, student polling, noise reduction, ability to mute all students, higher security controls, and what may be a valuable tool for teachers of our older students, breakout rooms, we have decided to move forward with purchasing the licenses for the enterprise version of the Google Suite, which will primarily be used for live synchronous instruction and will be instrumental for live office hours for supporting students learning remotely. 92% of classroom teachers indicated that they either agreed or strongly agreed that Screencastify supported them in delivering their instruction, with 88% saying it helped with student learning. Screencastify, a tool that can be used to record and annotate a screencast with or without the use of a webcam, is used predominantly for asynchronous instruction. As Screencastify rolls back its offering of their premium version as a free tool, we've decided to purchase the complete system to allow our teachers to continue using Screencastify with unlimited lengths of video, seamless integration with Google Classroom, and the ability to edit videos 
and screencasts they record. A common theme in parent surveys was the challenge of supporting their children, navigating usernames and passwords, and accessing online services. Our IT department has been working to set up a single sign-on system called Clever, which essentially presents students a dashboard upon logging in that will contain an icon shortcut to their most frequently needed applications. And in most cases, the Clever dashboard will remember their login credentials so that accessing online resources will not be as difficult. Another area we have placed a heavy investment is in hardware. During the closure months of last year, it became very difficult for us to support tech issues that arose when students were home. We delivered over 300 Chromebooks to students' homes, but that left over 2,000 students who used any device they were able to access. That could have been an iPad, a cell phone, their family desktop computer, or in some cases, their mom or dad's work computer. Troubleshooting issues became quite challenging as we were not in a position to diagnose or support non-district devices. Additionally, firewalls, filters, and restrictions on family and work devices prohibited, in some cases, our ability to have students utilize district resources. As a result, we have put in a purchase order for 650 additional Chromebooks to allow all students in grades K through 8 the ability to have their own school-issued device. Additionally, we have processed a purchase order for over 1,850 carrying cases to help protect the investment we have made in hardware as students transport these units back and forth. As with the rest of the country, the rush on Chromebooks and carrying cases indicates we will not have these devices in time for the start of school. And as a result, and to the credit of Dr. Gray and his IT department, we have been scouring our district for each and every device that is not assigned a student in an attempt to provide all with a device to start the year. However, we are still working on reclaiming all the units from those we sent out last year and as part of our summer program. In some cases with staff members, including myself, going to people's homes, knocking on doors, trying to rebuild our complete inventory, which has proven to be quite challenging. Along with this, in an attempt to alleviate some parent frustration, we're working on creating a parent virtual learning help desk, an online system that will route any issues or requests directly to a member of our instructional technology team who can handle or delegate the issue as quickly as possible to minimize instructional downtime and parent frustration. Circling back to teacher responses, one area that caused frustration was the amount of time teachers spent turning static PDF files embedded in our curriculum into editable interactive worksheets for students. As most of our curriculum is in Adobe format, teachers had to recreate these documents in some fashion so that students could complete them electronically. Or from parent responses, we found that they became frustrated by the amount of printing that they had to do at home for students to complete work manually, then take a picture to upload to Google Classroom. To address this, we've purchased a district license for a product called Kami. Kami is a tool that allows teachers to push out a PDF file through Google Classroom that students can complete electronically via overlay annotations and then submit back to the teacher who can provide comments and feedback on the same file. Students can insert text boxes, drawings, mathematical equations, highlights, and embed comments. The hope is that this dramatically reduces the amount of printing parents have to do and that it makes assignments, completion thereof, and grading much more efficient. Another resource we've acquired in preparation for September is GoGuardian Teacher. Now we've utilized the admin side of GoGuardian for several years now to help monitor and filter students' online experiences. Now though, with the teacher side, classroom management in a virtual world returns to the teacher in charge. Teachers can push out websites to all Chromebooks so that students are all on the same page. Teachers can lock Chromebooks so students can't wander down digital rabbit holes. Teachers can have chat sessions with students to assist them in their work. And at the end of sessions, teachers receive reports on student activity, helping the teacher keep track of on-task and appropriate virtual learning behaviors. Along with GoGuardian Teacher, we also rolled in the new video conferencing feature that is currently in beta stages. Thanks to our strong vendor relationships, we were able to be part of this beta group for about three weeks now in an effort to try the system and plan for professional development. GoGuardian teacher video conferencing will be a wonderful alternative option to Google Meet for those teachers who want to hold live meetings within GoGuardian teacher to help with a one-stop shop of efficiency in a singular platform for instruction. GoGuardian teacher video conferencing rolls in the control teachers need to have of their students' online experiences with security measures that are at this time, in my opinion, seemingly more robust than Google Meet. Finally, 
We've been working on opening up Gmail for students with strict control settings that would only allow students to communicate via email with their teacher and only receive emails from the teacher, not student to student. Opening up email for students, especially at the middle school, will open up a venue of communication between teacher and student that will hopefully address some of the parent frustrations we heard about having to be the intermediary when work isn't being completed and the teacher needing the parent to communicate with, with their child. Additional benefits of opening up email for students is to allow for more direct and specific feedback on student work and the ability for students to have one location to view upcoming assignments and due dates. Initially, student email will only be available at the middle school campus. In working with our curriculum department, we have also secured licenses for two computer assisted instruction and intervention programs, IXL for the middle school and Zern for the elementary schools. These two systems will help to identify any student learning gaps and target interventions for those students to help accelerate the gap closure of any learning loss that may have occurred over the last few months. So Chromebooks, carrying cases, G Suite Enterprise, Screencastify, Cami, Clever, GoGuardian Teacher, GoGuardian Teacher Video Conferencing, Student Email, IXL, Zern, and elementary teachers are coming back to a newly adopted math curriculum. If you feel overwhelmed listening to this update, Imagine coming back as a teacher to this whole new world of instruction and being trained in these tools while you have a group of five-year-olds in front of you, some of whom have never stepped foot in a school before. Being cognizant of this balance, we have put together a three-phase technology resource rollout program for the elementary schools. In the middle school where students are a little more independent and the teachers are more content focused, our rollout is a bit more aggressive. But in the three-phase model, Phase one, called record and post, will address about 80% of the necessary tools teachers need by retraining them in Google Meet, G Suite, Screencastify, and Kami. The vast majority of teachers are familiar with these tools, not including Kami, and they cover both synchronous and asynchronous learning, which is why we say it'll cover about 80% of our need. Once schedules become stable and chaos begins to calm, we'll move to phase two, called monitor and assess, which will include training on assessment systems, and GoGuardian teacher with a deeper conversation on the potential of opening up email for students in the elementary schools. Finally, when we're in the groove of this new instructional paradigm, we'll move to phase three called enhance and engage. In this phase, we'll move into GoGuardian teacher video conferencing and we'll introduce staff to other resources that can lift instruction and learning in a virtual world, such as Pear Deck, Quizzes, Edpuzzle, Padlet, and Nearpod. To support our teachers, students, and parents, we have significantly reduced the instructional load on our technology teachers in the hopes of utilizing them in a help desk model, providing triage support and just-in-time training during faculty meetings, grade level meetings, and their own set of office hours. They will be the first line of support to parents completing online help tickets and will be the gauge as to when we're ready to move forward and perhaps back in our phase rollout. At this point, I wanna give an enormous shout out of appreciation to our instructional technology coach, Christy Green, who has truly stepped up in an immeasurable way this summer. Last January, you might remember uh, she presented during a school board meeting about her work in a traditional learning environment using virtual reality goggle technology as a way of deepening student inquiry and learning. Now in this new environment, we see again how truly valuable she and her position are. Because I can only say that we would not be in a position to pull any of this off if it weren't for her knowledge base, work ethic, time commitment, dedication, and collegial relationships. All this being said, I wanna make two final points in a plea for patience and consideration. At the start of each and every school year and throughout the year, we have elements of technology that don't work. Printers don't print, Chromebooks don't turn on, accounts don't sync correctly. This year most definitely will not be any different in that regard. However, where it will be different is that the exposure of these technology hurdles will be more widespread. A child who can't log on won't necessarily be able to walk down to the tech teacher for help. Instead, they'll be home and the parent will see the issue and have to submit a help desk ticket. I need everyone to understand that we will have issues to start the year. We'll work through them and we'll work as quickly as possible, but mistakes happen and technology fails. And in a normal learning environment, we allow students to see this and celebrate the growth mindset that we all have, that learning and figuring things out is just part of growing together. The pandemic 
is not accompanied by a sprinkling of magical pixie dust that eliminates these issues. In fact, I would venture to say that with the accelerated rollout of all the resources I just presented and remote learning, the issues will probably be more prolific. Patience is going to be a necessity. The second point I wanna make before closing out is that our teachers and administrators are being called upon to step up and shine in a world we have not lived in nor taught in before. And in most cases, through the use of technology, a medium that may come naturally to some, but not to others. As I mentioned earlier, technology does not teach. Teachers teach. In my 20 years in education, I have interviewed hundreds of teachers for positions. And even with my inclination towards technology, I have never put technology above pedagogy. We in Medford have a record of hiring amazing teachers of reading, writing, math, science, social studies, music, art, and phys ed. In our interviews, we have always put a focus on pedagogy, understanding of child development, and supporting social emotional learning. And I would think our community would not want it any other way. Then, after we have found the candidate that we know has a solid understanding of their craft, then we work to help them find ways to utilize technology to lift learning. I would never want to see this process follow the inverse, not from teachers who teach my own children, nor for the teachers in our district teaching Medford children. I would not want us to hire technology superstars and hope that they might be able to pick up the intricacies of teaching a child how to read, write, or simplify mathematical expressions. Keeping this in mind, we have to remember that we will one day be back to normal. And at that point, we will be thankful that our teachers were hired because of their strength in content and pedagogy, and that we need to use that perspective to be understanding of those teachers who may not be as versed and quick to learn in the area of technology. We will offer them support. We will simplify processes and will intervene as we can, but I firmly stand behind our instructional staff, our administrators, and our district. And in the countless correspondences I have had with teachers over the summer, I can assure you, the board and the community, that they are committed to our students and doing the best they can during this overwhelming, complicated, and yes, unprecedented time until we can once again close the physical door of our classrooms and capitalize on the rich in-person interaction between teacher and student. Thank you again for the opportunity to share this update and your steady support of our district and our students. Thank you, Mark. Dr. Ratter, before moving on, does, does the board have any questions or comments for Mark? I surely have a comment for him. Well, seeing none, Mark, I, I, I just have to say, um, your approach with your department to this in regards to the surveys that you did and getting the number of responses that you were able to receive says something about the approach that you took and your, the planning process, because you really took into consideration the needs and wants of our teachers as well as our parents. So I, I salute you for that. Um, I'm sure that many of our parents uh, are under the impression that the technology department is a score of 10 or 12 or maybe even 15 um, support people. And that's not the case. Um, I wanna salute you, Dr. Gray, Christy Green, uh, and the technicians, which are about four at this time, for their assistance in working summer in terms of securing and getting ready our hardware to be able to launch to our students because getting is one thing, but getting ready to launch the students for the first, second, and third day of school. And for those students who are on 100% remote instruction um, is a daunting task. So Mark, uh, phenomenal presentation. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for all your hard work and Dr. Gray, your department, as well as uh, your department of four, as well as Christy Green, just overall great job. Phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you.